Hello, everyone. Once again, Hello. good afternoon for the Brazilians. Hello. Good evening for the Europeans. Hello. Hey, so today's a little bit different. I don't know how to introduce her. All right, we haven't met in person yet, but she's been introduced to me a couple of months ago through, I, I consider him a friend, but he is like his, her stepfather, I can call that. Aura, please yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. Her um, stepfather. Yeah, he's he's uh he's been with my mom for a while. All right, so he's her stepfather. Mm. Right. Yeah. So there you go. So I actually I was planning to invite him to participate in this sessions, but he told me, oh, one hour it's long. I don't know if I'm up to it. However, I have someone who's gonna be perfect for it. And Ever since I met her, she's been attending the sessions and she's been great helping us out. So I thought, okay, we're going to have to have a session with you. So here she is. Um, yeah, I can say that she's very international, born in South Africa, from Germany background, and now living in Portugal. Aura, welcome. And please tell us a little bit more about you before we start with the questions. You're very welcome here. Okay. Mm. Hello. Um, I'm not really sure what to say. I am 17 years old. Uh, I traveled a lot and I grew up very, very German. Okay. However, I was born in South Africa and um, I, I've lived in Portugal for about a month now, but I lived here three years ago for a year and a half and then I moved back to South Africa. Um, I'm planning on moving to Germany. Um, what else is there to say? <laughs> um, I really don't know what to say. I sorry, Aura, Aura, just about you. Do you are living in Portugal right now, or living yeah. in Germany? Uh, no, Portugal. I'm living okay. in Portugal right now. I've been in Portugal for a month. I arrived in on the fifth of July. Um, yeah, I read, what, I moved here from South Africa. What place, what city are you living now? So whenever I say to people, they don't really know. <laughs> um, but if you know Portugal quite well, then you would know where Santarém is. What place? I, I because I've been to Portugal last year, and I I, when I, I went around for many cities. I've been to Lisbon, Porto, what else? Uh, uh, the Alentejo place. Yeah, can you say that? Let's ask Adimilson to share his screen so that we can see exactly uh, where she's uh, at. Okay, yeah. yeah it's a I will enough. type Maybe it. Renata will recognize it. I will yeah. type it because it's a very, very small village like outside of Rio Mayor. Um, so I'll just type it. I think that's how you spell it. I'm not sure, but <laughs> it's a really, really small village. Um, I, well, I my... think that even for us Portuguese speakers, ahuga. How do you call that? I don't know how to spell ahugalish. Ahugala, ahugolas. Is it that? Yeah, it's ahugolas. But it's Aru Wallace. Aru Wallace. No, 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 I'm reading. I'm reading. Aru Wallace. No, you say in Portuguese, you say Aru Wallace. Yeah, you say Aru Wallace. Aru Wallace. It's a town. It's not a town. It's a very, very small village. Very, very small village. Um, About two hours away from Lisbon. Uh, It's... <laughs> It has a very, very small population and it's very close to somewhere called Rio Mayor, um, which is close to somewhere called Santarém, and then you get Lisbon. So it's it's a very, very uncommon place. Um, you, so whenever do, I tell people... <laughs> do you know how many people live in Arrocalis? I believe it's around 2,000 or less. Oh, it's really small. Oh. Uh, the, yeah, the only it's... picture, the only picture that is showing this this picture here, <laughs> a, a a bunch of leaves, just that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think yeah. it's just her house. It's just oh, your house. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, let me find let me find your house here. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, let let yes. zoom in, let zoom in. Oh, there yeah, is that's a pool. Exactly the... Which your this your is... house here? Is this the town? I have no clue. Um <laughs> oh, it, it looks pool. like the town. No, this is too fancy to be my town. Yeah, Rokelis. This one. Well, yeah, I, I stay there, I believe. I think so. I don't know. Um there should be like a place close to us called Monique. But yeah, it's it's a very, very, very small place. Um, I believe that there's around 2,000, but I think that might be pushing it. I think there's about 1,000 something. Um, it's it's like 30 minutes drive until you're in like a town properly for shopping and everything. And, and what are you doing over there? Are you studying or? Well, I currently have, I'm, I'm currently working two jobs, so I don't yeah. have time to study. Um but I want to go into university, but I'll, I think I'll only do that in Germany at the moment. I, I just finished high school. Mm -hmm. I graduated in May. So I'm taking some time off. I want to go do like some volunteering projects and travel around Europe because obviously living in South Africa, like you don't really get to travel that much. Um, it's very different to Europe. So I want to travel and I want to do a lot of things, um, but I definitely do want to go back to school. Um, I just think that I'll do that when I live in Germany, but I'm kind of just letting things happen. That's cool. which, part, which part of Germany are you going to? I want to go to Berlin or Hamburg because that's where my family kind of grew up in Hamburg. But um, it honestly just depends on the university that I go to. But I love yeah, Berlin. Yeah. Like I've I've been to Germany, um, and nice. <laughs> I really love Berlin. And I really like um, I don't know. People will think that I'm very weird for this one, but it's called like Wolf something, and it's really really close to Switzerland. Um, but I love that place. I don't know why. I just went there, and I was like, oh my word, this is so cool. <laughs> um, but I went there like seven years ago, the last time I went. So. It so you've got a choice me. between the, the capital or the south of Germany or yeah. eventually the north, you know, going towards Denmark in Hamburg. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm basically just waiting for my university stuff until I know where I want to live. But I definitely want to move there. Um, Germany has always felt like home for me. Um, I don't know why, even though I've never lived there. Um, it's always just felt like it's in my heart and I should be there. So I definitely mm -hmm. am going to live there, even if it's just for six months. I just want to stay there. Um, and then when that happens, it will be regarding my university. Do you um, have an I'm idea of what you want to study already? Or it's just um, something uh, that you're thinking of? I do. I want to go into language and linguistics. Mm -hmm. I recently, recently changed my mind because I was very set on being a neurosurgeon. And then I was like, no, wow. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, I don't want to do that. Uh, so I want to go into languages and linguistics because I very, very much enjoy writing. And I believe that I'm quite good at languages. So, But your English so is, is brilliant. And I suppose your German is the same. <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> okay let's let's start uh raising our hands if you want to ask her something because otherwise it's going to get a little bit confusing um i should go first okay uh Aura, please tell us uh how many languages you speak actually the reason why you end up going to portugal and how long you're going to stay there and then tell us your future plans when it comes to traveling like which are your the countries that you dream of visiting three questions at once let's go I hope you're gonna okay. remember them I remember so the first one was I speak five languages um at the moment I'm trying to learn more so I can speak English and I can speak Afrikaans which is 
uh, language in South Africa. I can speak German and Portuguese, even though don't ask me to speak Portuguese because I'm very shy. Um, and I can speak sign language. Oh, wow. Not fluently, but I am quite good, I believe. I remember that. Um, and then the next one, how long am I, why did I come to Germany? I mean, why did I come to Portugal and how long am I planning on staying? Um, I'm planning on staying for six months. I want to leave in December. So basically, the moment I turn 18, I want to leave. Like, that, that's basically, I turn 18 on the 5th of January. And the moment that I can, I'm bye-bye. Ja, ja. Um, But um, why did I come to Portugal? Basically, like, oh, I don't even care about personal stuff. So um, my, my mom is going through a breakup. And that's kind of weird because you know him. Um, but like <laughs> my mom was just going through a very, very hard time. And she kind of just like said, because I was, I was going to move here when I was 18. And so then my mom was just like, would, would you be okay with it if you could leave a little bit earlier? Um, because she kind of just needed her own space. Um, so yeah, I ended up coming a lot earlier, but I was always going to move here because it's, it's like, it's better to start in Europe and then like in Portugal and then go to Germany from there than just like flat out go to Germany. So it was always like a starting ground, <clears throat> but I only plan to stay here for about five more months. Um, hopefully it can be shorter than that, but I, it's probably not going to be. Um, I really don't like this country. I'm sorry. I'm so picky. I don't like South Africa. I don't like Portugal. Um, but yeah. And then um, my traveling plans. Wait, that answered the question, right? Uh, just tell us, uh, with who do you live there? How did you end up going to Portugal? You cannot just pack your bags. Okay, I'm leaving South Africa. I'm going to Portugal, and that's it. We need to know how okay, okay. you end up there. I'm sorry. Um, so my dad, my biological dad, he worked on the cruise ships after my mom and him got divorced, and um, he met this lovely Portuguese lady. Uh, love her, uh, and they ended up moving to London and then to Portugal but they ended up staying in Portugal and they have two kids together uh two little boys um I'm the oldest but I'm not her child uh they're my half brothers and so I live with my dad my stepmom and my two half brothers um yeah and it was I, I lived with them before about three years ago um and so it's not really that weird it's kind of feels normal but it also doesn't feel normal um but yeah it was I, I was like I said I was gonna come here I had always asked my dad like when I'm 18 can I come live with you just for a little bit so that I can get on my feet for moving somewhere in Europe um but yeah so it was just a lot earlier and we just like dad can I come and then he was like of course and so yeah um I live in the attic because we live, my my village is very very small and our houses are smaller, um. So they had to turn the attic into a bedroom, so they can probably hear every single thing that I'm saying right now. Um, but it's okay. Um, and then my traveling plans. Well, in December I plan on going to um Thailand for a couple weeks, uh, because my mom is turning 40 and I'm turning 18 in like the same week. So we want to go and just do like this, like big thing. Um, and then I'll be able to see her again, which is really nice. Cause I miss her like crazy. Um, so we want to do like a big thing. So I'm going to Thailand and then afterwards I want to from Thailand, I want to go, maybe I'll come back here first, but I want to go to South Africa for about three months or maybe even two months and um, I want to travel the whole of South Africa in an RV because I've like, I, I just think that it's so cool. Like I, <laughs> I grew up in Cape Town and the, I only, I went, the first time I went on Table Mountain, I was 16. It was like, what the heck, you know, I feel like I'm doing nothing in this country. Um, so I just want to see the entire country and just like to be able to like, I grew up in South Africa. I, I've seen Joburg. <laughs> I've seen Durban. Okay, I just want to be able to say that. I've never said that before. Um, so yeah, and then after that, like, 
uh, there's like this program called Erasmus or like the European Union program stuff. Um, and I want to start traveling with them because I work with them at the moment um, in Portugal for people that are coming here. Uh, that's one of my jobs. Um, and I just think that it's so cool. Like I get to speak to these people and I want to carry on doing that. So I've started looking at stuff already, but everything has just been so crazy. Um, and I need to be 18. So once I turn 18, I will start traveling with the like European Union as well, I hope. Yeah. Did that answer everything? I feel like I didn't answer everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and my dream country to go to, uh, it's Egypt. I know that it's very, very weird. Oh, and I and I really want to really want to go to Japan because basically I did karate for like 12 years of my life and it was all in Japanese. Um, so I just like I really enjoy the Japanese culture and I've seen a lot of things on social media. So I really want to go there. And then Egypt is like my mom has never traveled outside of South Africa before. Um, and she's always just like given me that stuff to be able to travel there. So I want to take her to Egypt. So it's, it's it was always her dream to see the pyramids. And it kind of just became my dream after a while. Okay. Wow. Thank you so much for your answers. I love your accent. So I'm going to let them. Carlos is in line waiting for, for you to answer him. So I hope. You give all these lovely answers to everyone. Okay, Carlos, go ahead. Okay, okay, people. Hello again. Uh, very good, very good to know you, Aura. Aura is an interesting name. Remind, reminds gold, Aura, or the morning. Okay. Uh, about South Africa. I know that in South Africa, there are so many animals, lions and elephants and rhinos, a lot of animals. And about nature in, nature in South Africa. I know that nowadays, uh, this country is facing some violence, okay, crime, especially okay, Johannesburg or Cape Town. Uh, information about nature, uh, animals and the uh, forest in South Africa, please. And about your volunteering, okay, you said you are a volunteer. Uh, what do you do as a volunteer, Aura? Okay, so um, about the nature and the animals and stuff. Um, yes, I feel very, I felt very, very privileged to be able to have so much wildlife around us. Um, honestly, I've actually never had an encounter with a dangerous animal like in South Africa, especially not where I lived, it wasn't very, like I, I lived right next to the national park, but not the Kruger National Park, the other national park, the one in Cape Town. Um, I lived right next to that, but I never, like you would see like giraffes and stuff, but I never had like an experience where like an elephant crossed the road or that type of stuff. Um, I, I just never had that, but there was a lot of, uh, not zoos, because they weren't in cages, but like you, you exhibits where you were able to see them, um, those type of animals, like the lions and all that stuff. Um, and the nature, I think that it's, I honestly think that South Africa is one of the most beautiful countries ever, nature wise. Like there is, there's so much there. And that's also why I want to go and travel everywhere. Cause like I said, like I've never seen so much of this stuff, but I just think that it is honestly so beautiful. Unfortunately, like, I think with all countries, it's the same. The people have kind of just messed it up. Um, so, yeah, but I think that it's a beautiful holiday destination. And I think if people have never been to South Africa, don't be scared of the animals because it I lived there for like 16 years. So I, and I've never had a dangerous encounter with an animal. So um, I don't think you should be too scared for it. Uh, they're not just roaming around in the wild. It doesn't happen. Um but yeah, I'm still really scared of them. Like if I go and walk in the forest, I, I've, I'm always in the back of my head, like there's a mountain lion about to like jump at me, um, but it won't happen, but I am still scared of it. <laughs> um, and then my, oh, nature. Yes, it's beautiful. I don't know what else to say about it. It's beautiful. People just mess it up. Um, and then, <clears throat> sorry, I've got like the driest throat ever right now. I'm so nervous, but I'm just gonna, um, and then, what? Oh, right. The volunteering. So 
Yes, uh, basically the people from other countries, they come here to Portugal and stay in the village that I'm staying at. And then I will go with them because like it kind of, they consider me as a Portuguese person here. Um, so they always have to be like one, because yeah, they always have to be one Portuguese person and one person from a different country doing things together. And what we basically do is we, we do odd jobs, like we'll like paint walls or we'll go to the dog shelter or we'll help the elderly, you know, um, you, it's, you just do like a bunch of odd jobs. You never really have like a set job. Um, and it's always, it's never a permanent job. It's like a three week program. Mine ends on Friday, which I'm sorry, but I'm so happy for because working two jobs is one of the most stressful things ever and props to anybody that does it um, because I can't do it. Um, and so I'm so happy that it's ending, but it is, it's a really nice experience, especially if you speak English well, um, you meet a lot of interesting people, you get to learn, it's kind of like this, you know, you you get to learn about different countries, it's it's amazing, um, but yeah, you just do odd jobs, yeah, that's basically it. Okay, thank you, Aura. Okay, just let me know if I don't answer the question properly, because I'm very nervous. Oh, no, no, excellent, excellent. Okay. Okay. I don't know how to say this. this is them. Okay, yes. Yeah, don't, okay, Aura, don't feel nervous. You are too young <laughs> to become nervous right now. You have a long life to become nervous, okay? But okay. I, but I, yeah, a question that I would like to ask you, how do you do to accomplish your your plans in terms of, in terms of travels? Uh, how do you, how do you set your budget to visit all the places that you usually visit? How you do? Um. So, I, that's a really good question. Um. Basically, I'm very, very privileged. The job that I have, the main job, I I get paid very well. Um. I, I feel very, very privileged. But uh, I also don't have bills to pay right now. You know, because I'm living with my parents, and then the income that I have, uh, I don't spend any of my money. Obviously, if I want something really badly, you know, I have the privilege of being able to ask my mom or being able to ask my dad. But if he doesn't, if they don't do it for me, then I can do it myself. Um, I don't mind. Um, but I save every single one of my paychecks. Like, I don't spend anything. And then when it gets to the time that I do want to travel, I will take out that. But I will, I will, I don't think I'll ever, I, I'm a very big person of like, Money is just money, you know, it, yeah, it yeah. can do things for you. And I understand that, but it's like, I don't believe in like saving and saving and saving and never doing anything with it. You know, um, obviously if I have a child, it's a completely different thing. If I want to build a house, it's a completely different thing. Um, but for, for right now, I, me just wanting to travel and stuff. So I take half of my paycheck. And I put it into complete savings. Like, I cannot touch that. Then the other ones, they're technically saved. But if I want to touch it, I can. But I usually don't. Um, and then those savings that I've saved, like, I cannot touch. Those are for my future investments, um, ways of making money, houses, property, anything, you know, if anything goes wrong. Um, and then the other stuff, like, I have a folder. <laughs> I have a folder of, like, every country that I'm planning on going to and I put in like I divide the money that savings into all of that stuff um and then if I have like a lot of money in the one savings like I have quite a bit for South Africa right now um I tend to just put it into the proper proper savings okay did you yeah. did you did you did you share some money to visit to, to visit Brazil <laughs> <laughs> um, from what I've heard about Brazil, I don't think I want to go there. Um, but yeah, I just think that I need to learn more about Brazil. At the moment, my my top countries to go to is South Africa, Thailand, um, yeah, Italy. Sure. I really want to go to Italy. I don't know why. I just think that it's close and it's nice. And then Germany yeah, to yeah. visit even um, and Egypt. Those are the countries that I'm saving for right now. Um, but I do have like a really, really, really big bucket list 
Um, and Brazil has a lot of bucket list items for me. Like, especially I want to go and jump. I'm a I'm an adrenaline junkie. So I want to go and jump off a hot air balloon in Brazil. Yeah. Skydive off a hot air balloon in Brazil. Because uh, they have the most beautiful ones there, apparently. So, And there's other things that I want to do. But, yeah. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> With the other person, I don't know how to say these people's names. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Yeah. Hey there. Go ahead. Ask her the question. Okay. Thank you. Oh, hello guys. So our uh, Portugal colonizes Brazil, right? So uh, how do we measure uh, Brazil? Wait, Did you sorry? get that? Did you get that? No, I I didn't understand. Yes. Portugal. Portugal. Alone is that Brazil, all right? Portugal uh, in the past colonized, uh, colonized, colonized, discovered Brazil. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, how do you imagine in Brazil? How do I imagine is Brazil? Yeah. Samba, samba, carnaval, and football. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. You know, I feel like they're they are together in some ways, but they're also very, very far apart. And I think that America is uh, a different thing to Europe. So I don't know. I just feel like they're culturally a little bit different. Um, but I've heard that South America, South, America, South America is quite dangerous. And there was another person on one of these that was doing about that also lived in Brazil. And I don't know, they just weren't hyping it up very much. And I kind of got a little bit scared and I didn't want to go there anymore. But um, like, yeah, I definitely want to go there. I, I don't really have any perception of it. I see, I it is true that I do see a lot of like festas. If I think of Brazil, I think of parties and weird mosques. That's what I think of. And crime. I think of crime when I think of Brazil. But like, I grew up in South Africa. I'm sure I'll be fine. Um, but, yeah, I don't really have a perception of it. I think that... But I do feel as though Portugal and Brazil, although they are close together, they are still very different. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. All right. Uh, we My... tell some jokes. Uh... We tell some jokes about Portuguese. As the Americans <laughs> tell, tell jokes about the British... I believe. But uh, uh, I guess Portugal and Brazil. We are mainly friends. Okay, uh, when we go there, I guess uh, in my my experience, I uh, was uh, very very welcome in Portugal. I'll have to go to Brazil and see <laughs> if I. Oh, welcome, 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 welcome! Not all Brazil is violent, okay? Because Brazil, we have two hundred million population. Maybe some cities more violent. Some cities very quiet. Okay, I'll have to go and check. Okay, welcome. Um, wait, somebody else. Or, or, yeah. or, uh, my question is about education in Germany. Uh, you are planning to 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 attend uh, college in Germany, and how is education in Germany like? You, you you need to pay. You have more private college. Um, I mean universities, or are you planning to? to attend like um, uh, public uh, universities. And how can you get into uh, public education in Germany? Uh, you need to to um, to have some tests to enter, like here in Brazil, that we have a test to enter in public education. And um, yeah, that's it. Um, so for me, I'm just, I think I've told people that I'm privileged like 80 times in this conversation, but I'm very, very privileged. And because I am German, I get to study for free. Um, anything, if I want to go to private university, public university, it's basically the same thing. But yeah, P private is more like doing more in English, but I can speak German and write German fluently. So I won't have a problem. Um, it kind of also just depends on the course that you go to. If you go to a more like um, if you go to a more difficult or a more specialized course 
or university. So like, let's say you want to be a surgeon, you want to be a, a heart surgeon. Maybe they won't be able to pay for that, you know? Um, so like, if you go more specialized, it's less likely that you're going to have everything paid for. But um, yeah, for me, my course, my, my university will be paid for and my internships and all that stuff, um, which I feel very privileged for. Um, and the university program, like the university process, uh, yes, you do have to do tests. I don't know how it is anywhere else, but you have to do like entrance tests as well as uh, you just have to have a really good, I don't know, how, like university application in a way, but it's kind of like a CV, uh, like a curriculum thing. Uh, you send through every single thing that you have accomplished, everything. Um, they mainly focus on like your school life. Um, that's why it's very, very good that I'm doing these volunteering projects now so that I can add it to my thing. They like drool over that stuff, um, especially if I'm working in the European Union. Um, so yeah, it, I, I feel as though the way that you described it, maybe it is very, very similar. You do have to do the entrance tests and um, it, it can be a very, very difficult process. They're very, Germany, is very big on their education. You know, they've pride themselves very, very much on their educational system. So you have to like really, really work to get into university because it was also paid for. So they don't want to like waste their money in a sense. And sorry, you. I, I think you already said about your graduation, what you want to be, but I, I forgot uh, the, 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 <laughs> the, the university that you, you want to be. How, how many years you have to, to attend to, to have your certificate? For me, it would be around five. If I want to specialize, it can be more. It can, if I don't want to specialize, it can be less, you know. Um, but that kind of includes internships, like working in places that have to do with your like course. Um, so like three years studying, two years internships. It, it honestly just depends, you know. I haven't actually applied yet. I've just done a lot of research on it. Um, I just I haven't applied yet because I want to get my resume up so that like basically I want to. They, they can't say no to me. I want to make sure that they can't say no. Um, and I want to go into language and linguistics. Like, yeah, but it might change. I really don't think that it will. But, yeah, I, I want to write books or be on the news or something. But, like, writing books is a hobby and then do something like government translating or I, I'm not sure. I just want to go into languages and writing. Have you have you uh, written some book yet or not? Uh, any any yes, books? <laughs> really? I I am writing a book at the moment. Uh -huh. Um, it's a very long book, and I'm kind of getting really tired. But I've been writing <laughs> this book until since I was 14 years old. Um, so it's been three years that I've been writing the book. Um because sometimes I just get irritated and I think it's the worst thing ever and then I just delete half of the things. Um, but yeah, I've been writing this for a while. When I was younger, I used to write a lot as well. Like I made, I never wrote poems or anything like that, but I used to make like these little stories and I was always very good at writing. Um, so I, I just, one day I was just walking and I was like, I'm going to write a book. And then- What What is the genre of the book? Uh, a it's, novel? It's a... <laughs> it's a horror type of it's it's basically like a like a trauma thing for this girl yeah she just goes through hell and that's that all right uh, curiosity uh when he, uh, your plans come back to to germany to study and uh you you mentioned that you love hamburg hamburg is that and um or berlin yeah I think that the two cities that you you like the most, I'm yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Because I have a lot. I uh, I live in a coastal city too here in Brazil. It's called Santos. It's uh, it, uh, uh here it has the biggest or the most important port in South America, and many people uh, go from from my place from Santos to Hamburg because the port. Okay. 
Uh, I think that the most uh, important activity, economic activity in Hamburg is uh, is the port. Um, uh, do you have some do you have some information about Hamburg in, in this aspect, in this economic aspect? Talking about the port um, of Hamburg. I I don't. I've never lived there before. My family is just from there, um, but I've never actually lived in Hamburg. Uh, the reason that I want to go there so badly is because my grandma was raised there. Um, so, yeah, and she spoke a lot about it. I She hadn't been back for a very, very long time. Um, so I don't think she knows. She didn't She didn't know much about the economy. And I don't think I was really ever. Oh, I, don't, I don't want to say this because it kind of sounds rude, but I don't think I was ever really interested in that. I mean, I guess I'm 17. I don't really care about the economy. You know, yeah. um, <laughs> I, yeah. I just. Yeah, I don't know much about it at all. I actually don't know much about Germany at all. Yeah. I just know what happened in my house when I grew up and that was that. But what are what is the city that you that you that you put in your plan to to go when you go to stay there? What well, I always wanted to study in um well, sorry, my charger is just not working. I always wanted to study in um in Berlin. I just think that it's so Berlin, fancy yeah. to say I'm I'm from Berlin, Germany. <laughs> I just think uh -huh. that's so cool. Um, but yeah, I, honestly, I I think I said it before. I don't remember, but I'm honestly not. I don't really care where I live. You know, it it's all going to depend on my university, what university I get into. Um, I just love mm -hmm. Germany. Period. So I just I I don't care where I go because I can always travel and go wherever I want to when I live there. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Do you, do you like to practice some kind of sport? Do I like sport? Do I like practicing yeah. sport? Or do you got to practice? Uh, no, I'm a very lazy person. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. Um, uh, I I think I said already. I I did karate for twelve years. I love it. I'm a brown belt at the moment. Um, I'm really just this close to getting my black belt. This close, <laughs> and it's just not happening. Um, because I keep moving. Um, uh -huh. yeah. but yes, I, I, I love karate and I love tennis, even though I never played it properly. I just think that it's really cool and it's really posh. I feel like such, I feel like such a girl. I'm like, I play tennis. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I, I just love tennis. Um, I think I suck at it probably. I don't know. I've never really tried, but I like tennis uh -huh. and, uh -huh. um, as a kid, I played a lot of sports, uh, and I really, I like ice skating a lot. Uh, okay, yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I do have a question for you, um, because you, you set up to, to go to Germany, but you never really leave there. Uh, what do you expect about Germany? Because I know a lot of people, uh, particularly students, I used to work with them, we were international students and uh, we had a specific nationality. And as soon as they moved to their own country, national country, they discovered that they were really, really different from the population that um, they were expecting there. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you have, so my, my question is, what do you expect from Germany? And the second question is, do you have a plan B if you realize that Germany might not be the place you want to be? Because there are plenty of other countries in Europe when you can actually study in English as well. So did you look as well at the other options that you've got in Europe in case it doesn't work for you in Germany? Um, yes, I did. You know, the thing is, uh, university is kind of just something that I just want to get like under my belt. Um, I'm not really too worry you know like if I go to university I go to university if I don't I don't you know I'm not really too phased about it but I've wanted to go to Germany since I was nine years old uh it's been my plan that like I was always going to Germany I don't care what I'm doing but I'm going there um I actually have really I have really low expectations for Germany I really do because I do know that although I am German I grew up very differently to the people there um, so I really expect to be very different, very culturally different. Maybe the stuff that my grandma taught me, they don't exist anymore, you know. Um, but I am very, very open-minded to it. You know, I'm kind of just, 
I'm kind of just, I have the mindset of like, I go to Germany, it is what it is, you know? If I really hate it, if I really don't like it, which I don't think I will because I just feel like it's my home, it's my baby. Um, if I if I don't like Germany, I'm going to come back to Portugal. Uh, that's my plan B because the current job that I have, I actually don't even want to leave anymore. Uh, I, I love my job. Um, so I don't think if if Germany doesn't work out, I'm probably running back here. Um, and then to just carry on with my job um or i would like to move closer to the uk side i don't really know i'm not really too interested in moving to other places in europe besides germany or portugal i don't think i could see myself living anywhere like but you know where wherever life takes me you know life might take me to like greece i really don't know you know um I'm open to living everywhere, but I just don't see myself living anywhere else. And if I was going to, I, I, I guess I would move to an English speaking country or an Asian country. Um, I really enjoy the Asian culture and I feel as though I would fit in quite well in some way like Japan or China or something like that. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, but there are many options and um, you've got, for example, in the Netherlands, a lot of universities who teach only as well in English. I mean, my daughter, mm -hmm. my children are French and they never lived in France and they love going to France on a holiday. But when they talk with young French people, they don't relate to them at all. So, um, yeah. but they, they did, uh, um, one studied here and the other one went to study in the Netherlands in English. So there are there are other options moving, you know, like you said, university is not something that means that you're going to spend the rest of your life there. It's a mean of uh, learning from another culture. It's an opportunity, really, to open your mind of, uh, on, um, you know, to something else in order to, to move on. But that's that's a good point, you know, and being open minded about your options is really, I think, the, the, the best way to go, really. So well done. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of, I, I have a plan, but I'm also just kind of letting life and God choose where yeah. I'm going. That's the best way to go. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I feel so loved. Okay. Uh, um, continue, continue with the Catherine path of questions. Um, yes, when it comes to Germany, right, you have said that you were born in South Africa, kind of being raised by Germans. Um, do you think you have like a very different accent when you speak German, but not living, uh, having lived there, let's say, okay? So you learned from your grandmother, a little bit from your father. Do you still speak German with your father at home at the moment? Or do you try to speak yeah. Portuguese with him? No, so I'm, I'm basically speaking... I speak German, English, and Portuguese all the time in the same day. It's really confusing and it gets really irritating. Um, but I speak German with my dad. Um, I speak English at work, English and Portuguese at work. Um, I try to speak English with my brothers because we're trying to help them learn. Um, and then I speak Portuguese at home with my brothers. But I speak English to my stepmom. It, it, it all just kind of depends on the person. I speak different languages with different people. But I, I mainly try and speak German with my dad. Sometimes um, I get very lost and, I, and, I, and I'll just start speaking Afrikaans or I'll start speaking English. And I'm like, I'm just going to stick to this language. It's okay. Um, accent wise, when I speak German, I sound very, very German. You know, I sound like I've lived there my whole life. Um, and I and I really do like that. I feel like I'm like that with Portuguese as well. Even though I'm not fluent in Portuguese, I still struggle really, really badly with verbs and sentences in general. Um, I still feel as though when I speak, I don't think you can tell that I'm not from here. Because um, a lot of people have said that. They were like, the only reason they knew that I wasn't from here was because I don't look like I'm from here. Um, and then South Africa. I have a very different accent. Um, 
yeah, I, I, I don't sound, I never ever sounded like I was from South Africa, even at school, I sounded like I was from somewhere else. Uh, nobody ever believed me when I said that I was South Africa, especially because, sorry, but I'm white. Um, so whenever people have the thingy of South Africa, they're like, they're black and they speak different. And for me, I am white and I speak very American in a way, or like American, British. I, I have accents from everywhere, but I can speak. I can have a South African accent. Um, and sometimes when I get annoyed because it's very, very rare, but it does happen that some people, um, some people will not understand what I'm saying when I speak. Um, but when I feel as though when I speak German, my voice is very deep and I feel like a boy. And then when I speak Portuguese, I feel as though my voice is quite high. And then in English, I feel like my voice is also quite like girly, but if I if I speak to a South African for very long, somebody with South African accent, my voice goes very, very deep. And I start like kind of speaking like them because I, I kind of adjust to accents. I don't know why I do that, but I adjust to the people that I'm speaking to. Yes, I think it's very interesting to hear you saying that because when we first met and now, I don't hear a South African accent whatsoever. And I tried to get a German speaker to join us today, but it was not possible. But I'll definitely get a German person to talk to you so I can hear your German accent. And then I'm going to ask him or her to tell me which accent do you have. So it's going to be very interesting when we get there. Okay. okay, that's lovely. Thanks for your answer. Okay, Laurence has a question as well. You're mute. Oh, yes. Okay. okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, when you you get angry, in what language uh, do you <laughs> get annoyed? Or do you, do you have to, oh, if you have to shout at yeah. someone or, or you bang your, uh, your legs against something, <laughs> what would be the language that will be really Sorry. good? <laughs> <laughs> when I... When I'm really angry at somebody, I want to tell them off. I tend to speak German. When I want uh -huh. to swear, I speak Portuguese because their their swear words are just so much more fun and they're so much more natural. And then yeah, but I I tend to have. And then if I'm speaking English and then I get angry, I start speaking Portuguese, um, or I'll speak German. But like if I'm speaking German, then I start getting angry. I speak in English, so. It honestly just depends on what language I'm speaking at that time that I'm getting angry. Um, but yeah, I love I love Portuguese swear words. I think that German swear words are crap and they sound like the German language. Is, I've always had this. The German language, it sounds so aggressive. But then when it comes to the swear words, it's like the nicest things ever. It just doesn't make yeah, sense. But that, that was not really my question. My question was more not consciously. You're really unconscious. And and you get really really emotional, strongly annoyed, emotionally annoyed. What would be the um, the, the really really? Oh, uh, like if you I think... will, I don't know. You throw something at, at someone, like you're really annoyed. You don't try to think how you behave. Uh, probably in English. I think I get angrier in English. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, I think it depends on the person because subconsciously, like even if I'm not even thinking about it, just that person, I automatically know they can speak German. So I yell at them in German or if they speak Portuguese, I yell in German. Um, so I, I don't know, subconsciously, uh, I, I feel like I, even when I yell, I don't really do it subconsciously. I'm just like, I just pick a language. I don't even think about it. It just comes out. Depends on the mm -hmm. person that I'm speaking to or the situation that I'm in. But I think mainly English, probably. Just, uh, just a curiosity. I think that the you, uh, the question that Simone did uh, was the about the accent. 
about uh, English accent. Yeah. So uh, why do I, I got curious? How do you follow the you got the American accent instead of uh, using or having the British accent? Because I think that you will be more common. You will be more normal. You get in the British accent, but you speak in a in a American accent. Yeah, in a good American accent, I can say that. Yeah. So how do you, how how do you get it? How do you did you get it? Uh, so it's a funny story because uh, I my mom was very young when she had me. So I spent a lot of my time with my grandma, who's German, and that's why I was able to speak German before I spoke English. Um, mm -hmm. And switching from speaking German to switching to speaking English, I had a very, very thick accent, um, like German accent, you could say, but I was a baby. So like, it sounded yeah. cuter. Um, and then my mom, she grew up in South Africa. She kind of speaks like me. Uh, a little bit more South African, but <clears throat> she always she always found the South African accent very irritating. So whenever I would speak that way, she would like, Aura, stop it. Aura, speak properly. Um, yeah, it, it, for my mom, it was always, I must speak properly. And eventually it turned out to be like this American, British, I don't know what it is. It's a something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a, my mom calls it the aura accent. Um, but yeah, it's just like, my mom never really liked the South African accent. So she would always just like, aura, stop, stop speaking like that, aura, speak properly. And um, because I spoke German first, my accent changed uh, very quickly. And I never really, I never got the habit of speaking in a South African accent. It was just never. Mm -hmm. It just never clicked in my head. It was always speak properly, that type of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now I've got no questions. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> You're muted. Simone, you, you you're okay. I no, I cannot hear Laurence. Nobody can hear Laurence. Ah, Laurence is, is mute. Yes, uh, now, is the now is it working? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's okay now. Yeah, or right. you seem to be a very outgoing person. And uh, is it in your character, or is it because you've been raised with them? Many friends of your parents or traveling always with your parents from one country to the other. How did you get to become such a outgoing person? Um, I'm not actually sure. When I was, I think I've always been like that. Uh, but that's not. But then that's when I think about it. It's not actually true. Um, I was a very like I like to be by myself, and I like to play by myself and I like to do things by myself I was always like that but I always I mean not always when I was younger I had many friends and then but I never wanted to spend time with anybody I always wanted to be by myself and then um eventually I got older and I became a very isolated person I didn't really speak to many people I was very very socially shy I was like I don't know I just like maybe it was just the going through teenagehood or something I don't know what happened but I was very very socially awkward I didn't want to speak to anybody I had no friends um and then I'm I'm not actually sure I got with my boyfriend um we we got together when I was 14 uh so we've been together for three years and uh he was a very friendly person and I I don't know I think something I, I kind of just woke up and I was like something just clicked in me because like he would do like the weirdest things in public and I was like oh my word I feel so weird um but then I started speaking more and he would tell me that I'm funny and I was like I'm funny and then 
I, I started speaking to other people and I constantly got, oh, you're very bubbly. You're very funny. You're very like not shy. And I was like, I'm the complete opposite. Um, but I think people told me that so much that I kind of just became like the most not shy person ever. I have, I, I don't know what happened, but in the past two years, like I have no social anxiety. Like I will do anything in public. Well, not anything, but I'll, I'll do a lot in public. Um, and yeah, I think I just got told that I was funny a lot. So I just tended to be myself and it, I, before I was also being myself, but I think I got with the right people, you know, I was surrounded by my boyfriend and he was the right person, you know? Um, and then I moved to Portugal and I was surrounded by the right people and it, it just, kind of brought me out of my shell and now I'm just I don't really care that much anymore um yeah and I just kind of just like I'm just gonna be myself and the people that like me are gonna come to me and the people that don't da -da, bye bye um so yeah I don't know I just I, I, it was basically because I just kept being told that I was funny and I was like if I'm funny I'm gonna be funny and then yeah. yeah. I so I wasn't you, got, you, you got to break through in this aspect. I think so. It seems to be like uh like Lores said, it seems that you 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 break through uh, this issue, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I did. And I uh, I feel so much happier for it, like being myself completely. I feel much happier for it, and I feel I feel better because a lot of people, like a lot of people used to tell me <clears throat> like, oh, you're so quiet, you're so weird, you're so this. And now I get told like, oh, you're so funny, you're so bubbly, you make everybody so happy. Um, So being myself also had more compliments and I'm a human, you know, you compliment me and I'm going to like, yeah. okay. Yeah. And I feel better about myself. So um, yeah, it, it was honestly one of the smartest decisions I don't know if it was technically a decision it was it wasn't it wasn't um decisions to just like completely just like not give an f I'm gonna say it like that yeah great okay Carlos with the last question because we're running out okay of okay okay you see I have three three children three sons they are adults and I don't have grandchildren okay and uh, in Europe, the, the population is decreasing, decreasing. <laughs> and what about you, Aura? Do you plan to have children in the future? Or are you not thinking about this? No, so um, one of my biggest dreams has always been to be a mom. Um, I don't know why. I just kind of like grew up and I was like, I'm going to be the best mom in the world. I am. Um, my biggest dream was to always be a mom. Uh, and in fact, I wanted to, about, if you asked me about five years ago, I wanted to have children already by now. Like that was my plan. I wanted to have kids now. Um, yeah, I, I, I love children. I actually, I work with elderly people and children, um, in my daily job. Um, well, a child and an elderly person. Um, I really, really do love kids. Um, I just, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of personal growth I have to do in myself I feel like being a parent is a very very big responsibility and I think that there's some people that shouldn't be parents because they didn't like learn before having kids um so I I definitely want children it's just honestly depends on when I'm mentally ready when I'm physically ready you know and then also I know that it's it's kind of sounds selfish but I kind of want to live life first you know, I feel like I just came out of my mom's house. So I'm, I just want to, I, I don't want to live for anybody at the moment. I kind of just want to do what I want to do and see what happens. Um, But I definitely want kids just, like I said, like my biggest dream was always to be a mom. Um, I don't know, it might change, it might not, but hopefully in 10 years, maybe we'll see. Um, I don't know. I just... Okay, I guess you'll be a very good mom, okay? I guess. 
<laughs> that's the biggest compliment ever even though i'm not a mom that's the biggest compliment ever um yeah i'm, I'm just i'm very religious so i believe in god's timing um and that's that basically and my timing i don't know yes uh, it depends on the person i want to have kids with a really really good man like i don't want to see like one flaw in him and if he's, if, I know that's, that's very like non-realistic, but just let me dream. Okay. Let me have my dreams. It will change one day. Okay. For now I'm going to be unrealistic and I'm going to be an ignorant teenager. Um, But yeah, I just, I want somebody that has the same, like, I want to be the best father, you know, that type of thing. Okay. Congratulations. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, guys. Um, yeah, what, what can I say? We just ran out of time. Aura, you're such a lovely girl. I'm so glad that Dana put us together. Uh, you're such a bright person. I mean, okay, you are a teenager and you will behave and you will make mistakes. You're going to do things like all teenagers do. However, I think you definitely have a bright future ahead of you. I definitely want to be part of it. So you can count on me for whatever. We are in touch. And thank you so much for taking the time and being here with us. For all thank of you, you who are also here, Bye. thank you for making this possible and this program so successful. And I will see you next week. Thank you guys so much. Aria, thank, thank you. Guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank see you. you soon, girl. Have a great week. Bye. See you soon. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.